Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And what goes up must come down. We're going to talk about the streaming wars uh, kind of petering out here, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Numbers are not good for a lot of streaming services. Again, there are way too many of them. Uh, people are actually canceling their streaming subscriptions. Some people going back, going back to cable. They're going back to cable because they can't keep up with all the... Right. The streaming Which we said content. was going to happen. It's too confusing. I mean, we've talked about it before. Too we, expensive. It's too expensive. You you subscribe to all of these services. It's it's more than you know Dish Network or mm -hmm. Comcast or whatever. So let's let's talk about that. We're going to talk about a new streaming war brewing that David Zaslav is not happy with Netflix uh, because apparently they were withholding pay for quite some time. Um, but they're actually pimping out their shows. You know, Sandman's on Netflix, but they were going to do uh, more DC Comics animated content with Amazon now. Uh, it's basically whoever's going to pay him because Zaslav likes it. He just likes money. Yeah, but uh, we're also going to talk about how a lot of households now are uh, canceling their streaming services and that uh, people aren't even buying new streaming devices, that sales are declining on that. But you know, I figure at this point, most people have a Roku. Most people want a Roku, have a Roku. Yeah, I agree. But I think the reason people are like, cutting their their services is because there's too many and too much. And they are doing the ad supported ones. But like a lot of them, like like Netflix, go, give you a discount if you do the ad supported. Then you have Disney, who is taking the, their basic tier price was and they're making that the ad supported tier and raising the prices for everything else, which is probably going to drive people away. So let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 282, almost 283,000 subs. Um, we are we are free to watch. You don't have to pay a subscription. If you mm -hmm. want to give us money, we like we like money. Uh, we still have to do Clownfish minus minus money from your bank account into our bank account. But there's no extra content. <laughs> That's how that works. See, we're gonna be different. We're thinking outside the box. Like, That's right. we're just, she's gonna tell you right up front, like you ain't getting anything special. You're just, You're just giving us just, money. Just giving us money. Just give us money. We're kidding. We're not actually gonna do that. <sighs> Lots of people do though. I know. <laughs> I know. Like, uh, the Hollywood Reporter: When the numbers don't add up, recession fears dent Hollywood streaming ambitions. Wall Street's having uh, lost patience with them. Executives are cutting costs and enacting hiring freezes as direct-to-consumer profits stay elusive. Direct-to-consumer sounds like they're talking about Disney because that's what they keep calling it, direct-to-consumer. Yeah, they said in the legacy media world where studios have been betting on streaming to make up for declining cable revenue, it's also provided a gut check. Profits are still years off from it, including Disney. They're not going to be mm -hmm. profitable until 2024, 2025. And then before that, they had to pay um, Comcast off for uh, their Hulu. share of Hulu. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. was it like 30? 30 billion I don't, I don't know I don't know if it's that high but they have to pay off their share of Hulu to to Comcast so I don't even know if they're gonna be profitable by then and the economic headwinds are accelerating cost-cutting measures that may have already been in motion as executives in Wall Street get more pragmatic about streaming this is bad for consumers because anymore to really have a show take off it ha usually winds up being a very expensive show um, you know, the Disney Plus stuff, you can kind of see the decline. It's like that horse drawing that you see on the internet where oh, it yes. starts out where it's really well rendered and then it gets a stick figure by the time. That's basically the Disney Plus shows. Like they started out being like movie quality and now you can see like it's just yeah. really cheap. cheap Hurry up crap. and get it out. Yeah, crap it out. Um, they're talking about the macroeconomic trends hurting linear advertising dollars. Everybody is hurting. Everybody everywhere is hurting because the ad revenue is drying up. Uh, this is on YouTube. This is on blogs. This is everywhere. Um, in fact, you know, inside baseball, I won't go into numbers specifically, but I, I would say on our blogs and YouTube, we're down about 30% mm -hmm. from last year. Now, we're fine, but, uh, you know, other people may not be fine, especially if you're hiring a bunch of employees at, you know, $100,000 a year mm -hmm. to work at these companies. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's the, you know, this is kind of what killed off like G4 and stuff like that. They expected all this ad revenue and it wasn't going to, it wasn't going to materialize. This is why you have so many uh, media outlets laying people off. And um, said many pure play entertainment companies are facing an existential threat says this guy, the chairman of creative media, largely because the pivot towards streaming has yet to be fully realized. The economics don't work. In the streaming first world, the content budgets are too high. 
The revenue that comes the revenue that comes in is too low in a hyper competitive world where everybody's chasing the same streaming. Right, because before it was like Netflix was doing really well because it was just them, and then there was you know Hulu, and yeah. then it was like those two, and everybody was kind of one of the two, and now it's like everybody and their brothers start is starting their own streaming service. So there's just too many. To com- there's too many out there competing. They said that uh, you know people were cutting the cord. Uh, well, actually, there's other articles saying that people are going back to it, but they said you know the expectation is that we're going to get you know, content that's as good as theatrical. And Disney kind of set the, well, Netflix kind of was, but Disney really was like, oh, yeah, we're going to spend as much money on our they shows. They did. They made that a big push when they first started. Which is part of the reason. Before Chapek, the pandemic. Bro. Yeah, before the pandemic. But that's part of the reason that Chapek supposedly got gone was he was pulling money from other budgets mm-hmm. to plow into streaming shows that were not going to turn a profit the way that they were expecting. To try but, to increase the numbers. To increase the numbers. And now it's just like you're just like chasing this, this empty thing. I mean, it kind of reminds me of like, People that spend all this time building up a following on a social media platform, and then the social media platform becomes a ghost town. You yeah. Know? I mean, I've seen that happen before where, like, these people are like, oh, I've got all these Tumblr followers. I'm a big deal on Tumblr. And then the bottom falls out of the Tumblr. And it's like, well, you can't monetize that because nobody's paying for Tumblr exposure anymore, you know? And that's kind of what— Well, it might be soon. It might be soon. Because cause... Mark Ruffalo's going over there. <laughs> Mark Ruffalo's going back to Tumblr. Um. They said that uh, subscriber growth has ticked up at streamers. Analytics company Antenna found an increasing le- level of churn among the top premium streaming services, uh, potentially a sign of consumers cutting back amid rising inflation. doesn't help that they keep jacking their prices up. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were more than 32 million cancellations among the well, premium services. We had Hulu, and we have Hulu without ads, but even then on certain shows that run ads, and the one day I no joke had like 10 10- ads or more. It might even, I think it was more than that, maybe, in a row. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> it was like several minutes. I, and, you, and I told you, and you came in to watch. And I was, we were counting. Mm-hmm. Remember? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hulu is horrible. I mean, it's like, seriously, you pause on Hulu and there, there's an ad. Like, yeah. The, and then if you were, you know, rewind something to watch it again to make you watch, sometimes make you watch the ads again. Yeah. They, yeah. It's ridiculous. And a lot of times it's the same, like three or four ads over and over and over again. And this is the thing. Disney was like, hey, we're going to go all in on an ad supported tier for Disney Plus. I'm like, that's great. The ad rates are like half of what they were last year. Well, they were demanding a whole bunch of money for it there, remember? Because yeah. they're direct sales and they're demanding like ridiculous they're not gonna high it. rates. They're not going to get it. I, I, well, they might. I don't know. I, I don't know if they're going to. They said that uh, it's easy now for these companies to lay off because they're looking at other companies. Competitors are laying off. And this is why you always see them come in waves like with the well, media that makes companies. Sense. Like, oh, well, if CNN's laying off, it's safe for us to lay off too. Right, because it all gets you know, buried and rolled in with everybody else's, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, we'll talk just here real quick. Uh, Zazlav is not happy with Netflix now. So they're trying to make deals. You know, and uh, apparently they've been holding off on paying him. Um, but they point out that he did the same thing when he was at Discover. Like it was, it was not that unusual to have eighteen to twenty-four months to do it. So they've been. That was one thing that they were going to bet on that Warner Brothers was actually going to job out their shows to other streamers. They were going to yeah send send them them to rent or license yeah. or whatever. And what's going to happen is since the money's running out, they're going to defer payment. Now Netflix, um, they're saying that. It can take 18 to 24 months to get paid. Now, I know this Oh, was, that's not good. Well, this is actually kind of normal for them because especially with animation, like animation houses were scrambling to do work for Netflix. But I know a lot of anime studios were like, yeah, we can't work with Netflix because they don't pay us for like two yes, years. Yes, we have talked about that. Yes. So these companies, what they're doing is they're taking out loans to cover the production costs themselves, hoping that in two years, Netflix is going to pay them. You know, so this whole thing has been, I mean, from my point of view... The whole streaming thing has been one big shell game because if, if Netflix is in, you know, Netflix, when they're supposedly making all this money, has had to defer payments for two years, that tells me that they're not making the money. No, because why would they defer it? Why would they be deferring it? You know, especially you'd want to get that on the books and be like, oh, it's an expense. You know, it comes you know, out of our taxes or whatever. And it just tells me that they are uh, pushing things back as far as they can push them. And as long as stu- – because studios are like, hey, we have the cloud of – our show's on Netflix. Yay, we're on Netflix. But everybody else is like, yeah, we were going to send our stuff to Netflix, but if we got to wait two years to get paid. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do it. Um, but, uh, yeah, they said that um, they said that 38% of Netflix can- cancellations in the third quarter were due to cost. And they, they're like, are people even going to come back for the ad-supported tier? They're just going to go back to cable. And I've seen more and more articles talking about people going back to cable. It's millennium. cheaper. It is. Like, Plus, streaming, honestly, it's it's overwhelming how many choices there are. And you have to keep track of, 
okay, well, which show is on which streamer now? The reason Netflix was great when it first started mm -hmm. was it was centralized. It was like everybody dumped their content. Same on with Hulu. The, both yeah. like you go to one of the two and you see what you wanted to see. Yeah, uh, Hulu for newer TV shows, you know, last night's episode of whatever, and Netflix for movies and older stuff. Everything was in one place pretty much, and you could just kind of surf and find it. Now it's like, okay, I got like 15 different damn streaming services. What do I want to find? Because they already pulled their stuff off of Netflix yeah. and Hulu to do their own network. And it's not sustainable. It's, no. it's just not. And, it's and costing probably more than, you know, having direct TV or Dish. It is. And people are starting to, to cut, and now it's like, what do I want to watch the most? You know, is it really worth $150 a month? No. No. So anyway, it's going to be really interesting to see when Hollywood bet the farm on streaming, how this plays out for them long term. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have a lot of people calling it out and I think it's only going to get worse. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.